up until now we have been working on the uniform quantization uh, and the basic idea behind uniform quantization was that uh, the number of quantile interval are equal uh, in uniform quantization uh, so if we are having uniform quantizer then it definitely means that the quantization noise is equal for all the levels so now if uh, i want to use this uniform quantizer for speech processing or converting an analog signal or speech signal from analog to digital uh, then i'll if i use a uniform quantizer there is going to be a problem uh, and that problem is uh, when we look at this speech signal uh, generally 50% of the time we are having a low volume signal which means anybody who is speaking will uh, be speaking in his natural tone or in a small volume or you can precisely say that they will be uh, speaking using their uh, low volume area and uh, these uh, volume or the amplitude are basically less than 1 by 4 of the RMS value now all of I hope all of you have uh, uh, an idea about the peak value and RMS value so generally peak value is higher and the RMS value is lower now imagine a signal uh, for which the peak amplitude is less than 1 by 4th of the RMS values uh, in general so uh, only 15% of the time the signal value exceeds the RMS value so it means most of the time we are dealing with a signal that is low amplitude signal now if I want to calculate SNR if I'm using the uniform quantizer then the signal to noise ratio for low amplitude signal is going to be poor why it is because uh, most of the time when my signal is uh, having low volume or low amplitude so definitely signal power will be lower but uh, as we are using the uniform quantizer the noise power will remain the same as any other area so if i calculate signal to noise ratio for low amplitude signal then it will be a poor value as compared to a situation when we are going to have uh, a higher uh, value of a signal which means higher signal power and which in turn will, will give me a higher signal to noise ratio uh, so the basic idea is that uh, we cannot use a uniform quantizer uh, for uh, speech signals or any other signal where most of the time the signal is in occurring in the low volume area or low amplitude area so what we can do about it is that we can use a non-uniform quantizer uh, non-uniform quantizer is basically when you prevent the poor signal uh, to quantization noise ratio uh, we have to avoid it in any case so what we are doing in non-uniform quantization is the quantization level for low amplitude speaking signal are finely distributed which improves the signal to noise ratio by reducing the quantization noise which means if i look at this thing and uh, this this left side is basically for the uniform quantizer and the right side is for non-uniform quantizer so now if i look at the uniform quantizer there is a problem where the weak signal area is which means i will ha i will be having a poor signal to noise ratio here so what I have done in non-uniform quantization is that I have increased the number of quantization levels uh, in the area where the signal is weak while I have a smaller number of quantization level in the area where the signal is strong. So it uh, definitely means that I am not using a quantizer which is uniform. It's because uh, the basic idea or the basic uh, requirement for uniform quantization is that all the uniform all the quantization levels should be evenly spaced but in case of non-uniform quantization we are dealing with a situation where all the quantization levels are not evenly spaced which means quantile interval is varying between uh, smaller to large whereas it is small in the area where the signal is weak and it is uh, large uh, it is small in the area where the signal is strong so uh, yeah, one way of performing uh, the non-uniform quantizer is that you design it by scratch uh, which is going to be more complex but another way of uh, doing non-uniform quantization is that uh, you distort the signal 
which I mean as input signal, you need to distort the input signal with logarithmic compression and then provide it as an input to the uniform quantizer. At the receiver, the inverse compression characteristics are used, which is basically known as expansion. So uh, this compression expression characteristics are jointly known as compending characteristics or compending. So uh, what it essentially means is that if you look at this figure 2.19 uh, on the top uh, you can see a staircase where uh, you are having a smaller deviance in the area of smaller or weaker input and higher deviance in the area of uh, larger input. So it means that you need to achieve non-uniform quantizer characters. Like this is something uh, in figure 2.19a we need to achieve this non-uniform quantizer characteristics. So what we actually do is that we are having a compression characteristics in figure 2.19b. So this essentially means that we are basically using some kind of compression or logarithmic scale instead of giving the original input data. So you can see a straight line and you can see a curved line here. The straight line is marked with no compression which means this was the original data that we actually got from the uh, sampler. Uh, and the other one is a solid black line uh, that is a curve uh, which is basically the compression characteristics. So what we do is we map our input data using this compression characteristics and then put this compressed data to the input of the uniform quantizer and the resultant would be basically the output of something that looks more like non-uniform quantization. So in summary, if I want to uh, wrap it up in just one situation or one sentence, it means we are combining figure B and figure C to get to the figure A. If you look on the right side of this slide we are having another curve which is basically blue one so uh, the straight line is basically the original data while the other envelopes are basically the compressed or expanded data